Welcome to Don't Do This Guide Pruning Edition. Did you know that improper pruning can actually make your plants grow the wrong way? Just like a bad haircut, a bad prune can lead to some seriously awkward growth. Stick around to find out the top pruning mistakes you need to avoid to keep your garden looking fabulous. Let's get pruning. Chapter 1. Timing is everything. Pruning at the wrong time. The garden you see marches to the beat of its own drum. Prune at the wrong time and you risk disrupting the plant's natural cycle, weakening it, even leaving it vulnerable to disease. Take your roses, for instance. Late winter or early spring, just as the buds begin to swell, that's the time to prune them back. Fruit trees require a bit more nuance. Summer pruning is often the key for apple and pear trees, while stone fruits like plums and cherries prefer a gentle prune in late summer. Lavender only needs a light trim after flowering to keep it tidy. Remember, every plant has its own story to tell, its own preferences when it comes to pruning. Do your research, get to know your plants, and you'll be rewarded with a garden that's healthy, vibrant, and full of life. Chapter 2. Sharp and spotless, using dull or dirty tools. Sharp clean tools are the key to successful pruning. Dull blades can crush and tear plant tissue, leaving them open to infection and disease. Dirty tools are a surefire way to spread disease throughout your garden. Before each pruning session, take a moment to sharpen your blades and give them a thorough cleaning. A quick wipe down with rubbing alcohol or a diluted bleach solution will do the trick. When you're finished pruning, clean your tools again, dry them thoroughly, and store them in a dry place. Remember, sharp, clean tools equal healthy, happy plants. Chapter 3. Less is more cutting too much at once. Cutting too much at once can shock the plant, weakening it and making it more susceptible to pests and diseases. Instead of going for the big chop, take a more measured approach. Remove no more than a third of its growth at a time. This will allow the plant to recover gradually, conserving its energy and encouraging healthy new growth. Remember, pruning should be a rejuvenating process, not a punishing one. Your plants will thank you for it with healthy growth and an abundance of blooms. Chapter 4. The Art of the Cut, Ignoring the Branch Collar A proper pruning cut is all about precision and respect for the plant's natural healing process. At the base of every branch, you'll find a slightly swollen area called the branch collar. When pruning, make your cut just outside this collar, leaving it intact. Cutting into the branch collar can damage these vital cells hindering the healing process and leaving the plant vulnerable to infection. Make your cut just outside this ring, angling the blade slightly away from the stem to prevent water from collecting on the wound. A clean, precise cut just outside the branch collar will encourage rapid healing. By understanding their needs and respecting their natural healing abilities, you can create a garden that's both beautiful and thriving. Chapter five, topping a tree's worst nightmare. Topping trees is incredibly harmful to the tree's health and structure. It removes the tree's natural growth points, leaving it confused and disoriented. The tree will send out a profusion of weakly attached branches, creating a dense, bushy canopy that's prone to breakage and disease. Topping also leaves large, open wounds that are slow to heal, inviting decay and insect infestation. Consider alternative methods for managing tree size, such as crown thinning or crown reduction. Let's treat trees with the dignity they deserve and avoid the harmful practice of topping altogether. Chapter 6. Stubs, a recipe for disaster. Leaving stubs when pruning is like leaving a door wide open for pests, diseases and decay. The stub becomes a breeding ground for fungi and bacteria, which can then spread to other parts of the plant. Stubs also look unsightly, like little jagged teeth marring the otherwise smooth outline of your plants. Make clean, decisive cuts just outside the branch collar, leaving no stub behind. If you're dealing with a large branch, use the three-cut method to prevent tearing and ensure a clean break. By avoiding stubs, you're giving your plants the best chance to heal quickly and efficiently. Chapter 7. The Delicate Dance of Flowering Plants Overpruning flowering plants can significantly reduce their floral display. The key to successful pruning of flowering plants lies in understanding when they form their flower buds. Some plants, like spring-blooming shrubs, form their buds on the previous year's growth, 
prune these plants immediately after flowering. Other plants like roses and hydrangeas bloom on new wood. Prune these in late winter or early spring. Deadheading, the practice of removing spent blooms, encourages the plant to produce more flowers. By understanding the plant's blooming cycle and using the right pruning techniques, you can enjoy a garden bursting with color and fragrance. Chapter 8. Safety First. Protecting yourself in the garden. Always wear protective gloves when pruning. Thorns, splinters and sharp branches are no match for a sturdy pair of gardening gloves. Eye protection is also crucial, especially when pruning overhead or dealing with plants that have a tendency to spring back. Always use a sturdy ladder and never overreach. A fall from a height can result in serious injury. Be mindful of your surroundings when pruning. Make sure you have plenty of space to move around freely. Be aware of any potential hazards, such as uneven ground obstacles or electrical wires. Safety should always be your top priority when gardening. By taking a few simple precautions, you can ensure that your time in the garden is both enjoyable and injury-free. Chapter 9. Know your plants. Understanding growth habits. Each plant has its own unique way of growing, and it's essential to work with this natural growth habit rather than against it. For a naturally rounded shrub like a hydrangea, pruning it into a square shape will only create a battle of wills. Observe how the plant naturally grows and prune it to enhance its inherent form. For a more columnar plant like a yew or a juniper, focus on removing any outward growing branches. Pruning should be a collaborative effort between you and your plants. By understanding their natural growth habits, you can prune them in a way that enhances their beauty and encourages healthy, vigorous growth. Chapter 10. The Pruning Plan – Avoiding Impulsive Snips Before you even think about making a single cut, take a moment to step back and assess the situation. What are your goals for this particular plant? Do you want to reduce its size, encourage more blooms, or simply remove any dead or diseased wood? Once you have a clear idea of what you want to achieve, you can start to formulate a plan of attack. Identify the branches that need to be removed and mark them with a piece of string or a dab of paint. Pruning is not a race. It's a thoughtful process that requires patience, observation, and a willingness to work with the plant's natural growth habit. By taking the time to plan your pruning cuts, you can ensure that you're making the right decisions for the long-term health and beauty of your plants. Chapter 11, Wound Care, Aiding the Healing Process. Large pruning wounds can benefit from a little TLC. While small cuts will generally heal on their own, larger wounds can be more susceptible to infection and decay. To aid the healing process, you can apply a pruning sealant or wound dressing to the affected area. Pruning sealants create a protective barrier over the wound, preventing moisture loss and deterring pests and diseases. Wound dressings are designed to absorb excess moisture and promote air circulation. Proper wound care is an important part of responsible pruning. By taking the time to care for your plant's wounds, you're giving them the best chance to heal quickly and completely. Chapter 12. Shaping the Future Pruning Young Trees The goal of pruning young trees is to establish a strong, well-balanced framework that can support the tree as it grows. This involves selecting a central leader and removing any competing leaders. Space out the scaffold branches the main lateral branches that will form the tree's canopy. As the tree grows, continue to monitor its growth and remove any branches that are crossing, rubbing, or growing inwards. Pruning young trees is an investment in their future. By taking the time to shape them properly, you're ensuring that they grow into strong, healthy, and well-structured trees. Chapter 13. The Final Touch. Cleaning up the garden, all those pruned branches and fallen leaves can harbor pests and diseases. Gather up all your prunings and dispose of them properly. If you have a compost heap, you can add your woody prunings to it, where they'll break down over time and enrich your compost. Avoid adding any disease material to your compost, as this could spread the infection. For larger branches or for prunings that are diseased, you can either burn them or dispose of them at your local recycling center. Don't forget to give your tools a final clean before putting them away. By taking the time to clean up after pruning, you're creating a clean and welcoming environment for your plants to thrive. 
Pruning is an essential gardening task that can significantly impact your plant's health and appearance. By avoiding these common mistakes, you'll ensure your garden thrives and looks its best. Thanks for tuning in to Don't Do This Guide. If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tips and tricks to make your life easier. Happy pruning and see you in the next video.